the power of God, I, I don't know, but there are people God is raising to become mighty vessels. I just saw an anointing rest on you, this role. In the name of Jesus, I don't know where you are, but I pray may that grace now, let it rest upon you and shift you to a new dimension. In the name of Jesus Christ. Welcome to Christocentric Message. On this channel, you are going to get soul-lifting messages, faith-based content, prayer drills, and videos that would help you grow spiritually. Remember to subscribe to the channel, like the video you are about to watch, and comment on it. Stay blessed. And I'm a student of revival myself. I have studied the moves of God from Scripture. I have studied the moves of God as, as much as I can find in any and every continent in a bit to understand why revivals die, why they fail, why they cease to last. And I've had the honor and the privilege of meeting a few of these revivalists in their lifetime. It's an honor that God gave me to listen to them. What did God tell you? What did you do right? Where did you miss it? The Bible says the things that are written are for time. They are for our learning so that we through the comfort of scripture might find hope. Are we learning this morning? The first thing I want to tell you is that kingdom advancement is territorial. The advancement of the kingdom is territorial. That means that God desires that his kingdom be advanced, but there is a territorial component to it. That means that if South Africa does well advancing the kingdom of God, Malawi, Nigeria, Africa as a continent, Europe, America, then the whole earth indeed would experience the reality on the life of the life and the power of God. But if a territory fails to advance the kingdom, it does not matter what else another territory is doing. With time, the inability of that territory to press towards God will affect those who are on fire. Are we together now? Yes. One song from one territory can become the instrument of revival in another territory. One message from one territory can become the instrument of revival in another territory. Territories are spiritually interconnected. That means if one territory is excelling spiritually and another territory is going down, the devil will ship somewhere. He will ship something from that cold territory that will destroy the fire. Every revival died because someone came with an idea and a philosophy from a territory that was antichrist and he doused the fire in the territory where the fire was burning. So it matters. This was the mistake that Esther wanted to make. She seemed safe because she was in the palace. While her man was plotting against the Jews and Mordecai gave her a counsel. He said, don't you think that you are safe forever? You are only safe for a season. If you don't use your influence to advocate our freedom, when he's done with you, he will come back. When he's done with us, he will come to the palace and fish you. And Esther said, no, I will use this opportunity now and go to the king even though uninvited. And if I perish... I perish. Her insistence was what brought to naught the plot of Haman. Kingdom advancement is territorial and all territories are spiritually interconnected. This is true. There are a few keys that I have learned. The Bible says in Philippians chapter 2 from verse 13. Let's hurry up. Just an exhortation. Philippians chapter 2 from verse 13 to 16. Here's what it says. Philippians chapter 2 from verse 13. It says, For it is God which walketh in you both to will and to do of his good pleasure. Uh-huh. 
It says, do all things without murmuring or disputing that ye may be blameless and harmless, the sons of God, without rebuke in the midst of a crooked and perverse nation, among whom ye shine as lights in the world. Last verse. Holding forth the word of life, that ye may rejoice in the day of Christ, that I have not run in vain, neither labored in vain. He says there is a mandate upon us that in the midst of a wicked and a perverse generation that we are mandated to hold that light and to shine it forth so that everyone would see. In Acts chapter 1 and verse 8, we've discussed this a bit in previous sessions. Jesus now, Jesus began a discourse with the disciples when he resurrected from the dead. The Bible says he was with them 40 days teaching them on the matters of the kingdom. And they thought he was going to restore the nation of Israel. And they asked him a question. They said, will you at this time restore the nation of Israel? He said, it is not for you to know the times and the seasons that the Father has put within his care. Verse 8 now says, but ye shall receive power. After that, the Holy Ghost is come upon you. And that power will make you witnesses, validators of my claim. And now he creates a territorial component to that assignment. You will be witnesses unto me both in Jerusalem and Judea and Samaria and to the uttermost part of the earth. Our mandate, listen to me, our mandate as far as preserving the move of God is to ensure that God and his purposes remain alive within a territory transgenerationally. Let me repeat that. We have a corporate mandate as the church in any territory to ensure and insist that God and his purposes remain alive, not just within our lifetime, but transgenerationally. South Africa, hear me. That means if Christ tarries, a time should never come in this nation where the subject of God becomes obsolete. You have an assignment to preserve God and his purposes transgenerationally. Now, I know people are following from all over the world, but respectfully speaking, across Europe, across many parts of the West today, spirituality has plunged into an unfortunate dimension and let me tell you what happened in the 60s and the 70s please pay attention when great generals those who call god's generals these mighty men of god were were trailing that entire environment with the fire of revival there was a mistake that they made that we should not make. Africa, please listen to me. They made a mistake. They ignored the generation after them. They were focused on blessing people. They were on crusade grounds, healing the sick, raising the dead. But they left their little toddlers who are now the leaders. Remember, that was the strategy that the spirit of the Antichrist was trying to birth in Egypt. He said, we will allow you go, but leave your wives and children. Moses said, no way. All of us will go. Our future will go with us. Our support systems will also go with us. Let me tell you this. When the devil tries to stop the move of God in the lifetime of a man, when he finds out you have an unbending covenant with God and you will not change, the next strategy is to distract you so that you are so focused in the work that you forget that one day you will not be here. Many of them ignored their children. And so the Antichrist said, you know what? Give up on this prayer warrior woman, she will never backslide. Give up on this evangelist, she will never go down. But let us go back and pay the price for the next 30 years growing with their children. Now the Antichrist grew with the children. Now you call the name of Jesus, they tell you nonsense. I didn't grow with that name. Why are you now introducing it in my adulthood? The Bible says train up a child. Not train up an adult. He knows why he says train a child. It is difficult to train an adult. 
preserving the move of God. Pay attention. It's a mistake. Now, we honor the West. Don't get me wrong. We, we remain indebted to them for the dimension of God and the Christian faith that they so lavishly brought to us. However, we are learning from that mistake. Are you aware that the average teenager right now, I don't know how it is in South Africa, but the average teenager completely ignores and hates anything that has to do with God. They love IT, they love apps, but you mention God and it's as though you are mentioning a typewriter. They say, get out of my way, I'm not interested in all this nonsense. It's a subliminal programming. The Bible says there arose another Pharaoh that did not know Joseph. So South Africa, my final word to the body of Christ in this territory, in this season, is that I want to teach you and give you six keys that the Lord gave me very quickly. If you hold on to these keys, I give you an assurance by the God of heaven that 100 years from now, Jesus will still be lifted in this territory. You see, quality control, systemic quality control is the key to preserving the consistency of products. In business, we teach that. Is that true? Yes. There's an apple drink that I love, organic, wonderful apple drink. I think it's from the U.S., and most times when I take it, they started in, I think, 1886. That was where they started the company. 1886. And they are still working today. They have, they have done well to maintain the quality. Do you know why? Because they created a systemic nature of quality control that does not depend on the individual man in it. We must create such a system in South Africa. Question, is there a system to make sure sinners are saved? Like I taught you. Is there a system to make sure the saved are transformed? Is there a system to make sure the transformed are empowered? Is there a system to make sure the empowered are preserved through character and humility? If you lose that formation, you have lost it. Let's do a one-minute recap over what I taught yesterday. The greatest need of a non-believer. Come on, talk to me, intelligent people. The greatest need of a non-believer. The greatest need of a new believer. Transformation. The greatest need of a transformed believer. Empowerment. The greatest need of an empowered believer. Character and humility. And when you are there, you recycle it back again. Back to Jesus again. It starts and ends with him. If you don't find Jesus at the end of your pursuit, you are missing it somewhere. You should find him at the beginning and at the end. He brings you back the beginning and the end. Are we together? Six keys. I have studied this in the life of territories where godliness has been preserved transgenerationally. Let me give you the keys very quickly. Are you ready? Number one, for the move of God to be preserved in South Africa, you must ensure that the priesthood ministry of prayer never goes down. Amen. Write it down, please. The priesthood ministry of prayer. Notice, prayer does many things and prayer was allocated to achieve many things the primary purpose of prayer is not just to receive things the primary purpose of prayer is for your transformation there is a dimension of prayer that is for receiving petitions there is a dimension of prayer that is for warfare and intercession please hear me if you lose the priesthood ministry of prayer at a territorial scale I assure you, the power of darkness will ravage the land and destroy anything God. In the land of Babylon, there was only one request. One request. That because of the prayer of Daniel, the spirits of the Medes and the Persians could not penetrate to thwart the purposes of God. And so, Satan walked through the members of parliament to pass just one law. 
you would think they were just discussing it was about attacking the priesthood of prayer and they came up with a proposal let there be no prayer in the whole land of babylon for just 30 days that's only that's how short satan needs a land without prayer to wreak havoc 30 days without priests who can pray The priesthood ministry of prayer. The fire upon your altar, South Africa, must not go down. Amen. Please hear me. Prayer is not for prayer warriors. Prayer is for men. Amen. He spake a parable to the end that men ought always to pray. If you do not pray, you cannot authorize the hand of God. To rest upon a land and birth his purposes. You have to understand the rules of engagement. God is almighty. But he, the earth has he given to the sons of men. The Bible tells us clearly that the whole world lies in wickedness. It is no news that the devil will want to wreck any family, any industry, any business, any church. If allowed. Are we blessed? Listen, you must never stop initiating prayer chains. You must never stop initiating prayer groups. There are some of you who God has anointed to be intercessors. Men and women, now is the time to put on your priestly regalia. A destiny is at stake. A generation is at stake. Oh, awake wailing women. Awake men and women who know how to hold on to the four horns of the altar. Preserve the next hundred years of South Africa now. Are we together? It says give him no rest until he establishes Jerusalem as a praise. Everything that happens physically is something that has been concluded in the realm of the spirit. The book of Job teaches us that. Nothing just happens. The ministry of prayer. Churches, pray. Pastors, pray. Don't just preach. Pray. 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 And fast. Pray. Not pray alone. Pray and fast. South Africa, pray and fast these are the irrefutable keys that control the move of god the keys that control revival prayer and fasting it will never change it has never changed pray in the morning pray in the afternoon pray in the evening pray all across south africa let every home become a house of prayer pray with your children pray with your husband pray with your wife pray with your workers Businesses pray, companies pray, industries pray, members of parliament pray. Listen to me. I charge every father here. You are not just a father because you provide bread. You are a father if you lead prayers. Not just participate in the prayers. Lead it. Show your children how to be a spiritual man. Listen, I look forward to times in South Africa where a family may be, it's night time and they've gone to bed and they hear the voice of their father as the priest of the house. From the living room to the kitchen and you open the door and lay hands on your children. When they wake up, you say, no sleep. I'm performing my priestly duty. You sleep, I'm awake for you. Let me see the devil that comes to destroy your children when you are a man of prayer. Let me see the devil that comes to destroy your business when you are a man of prayer. Instead of complaining, pray. Instead of complaining, pray. The same energy it takes to complain is the same energy it takes to pray. Can I tell you this? An attack on your prayer life is a real attack. 
Let me repeat South Africa. An attack on your prayer life is a real attack. Don't give excuses and say, I am busy. When you are sick and down, everything you are trying to do, you will not be able to do again. Don't let the devil destroy your territory. Let him know there are priests in South Africa. Fortify the spiritual borders of your territory. Be the watchman on the wall. Stand. He says, I have set watchmen. Every pastor here, you must get to a time where you lock the church and you are the only one there. I'm, hear what I'm telling you. I'm teaching you secrets in the kingdom. Lock your church and be the only one there. No usher, no protocol. Just you and God. Lord for your glory. Lord for your purposes. Can I tell you this? If you give your children a good degree and you don't give them God and transfer priesthood, you did not complete your investment in them. Don't just give them education. Give them spirituality. Don't just give them education. Give them spirituality. The priesthood ministry of prayer. We got into this work by prayer. We have been preserved by prayer. Please hear me. If you do not fast, you will remain weak. The good old school art of fasting has been the key to strength and stamina in the spirit. This kind goeth out not, but by prayer and fasting. There are issues that you need to confront with prayers and fasting. Fasting does not kill. Turn that plate upside down and come before God. Please sit down. This is supposed to be a charge. <laughs> Preserving the move of God. Pastors, let me give you an advice. Be careful with the deception of being busy in ministry. Be careful. When sometimes when the devil wants to destroy you, he will allow so many invitations to come into your life. There is a skill to honoring so many invitations and still remaining on fire. I am busy and busy has destroyed many people. You must learn to wake up in the night. Use your nights. When people are asleep and there's no distraction, you wake up. You are hearing a report in your job that is not pleasing. Carry your CV and drop it on the ground. Someone tells you in the office, over my dead body for you to rise. Don't fight him. Go back to your control room. Hear me? James 5.15 Please let's hurry up. We came to church this morning. James chapter 5 and verse 15. Hmm. <laughs> James 5 verse 13 I meant to say. 13. Please read. One to read. Is any among you afflicted? What is the cure? Let him pray. The moment you find out that there is any form of affliction, your first port of call is not to discuss and call people who cannot help you. There is a control room that we have. The advantage of priesthood. You can manipulate realities to be consistent with the word of God when you know to pray. How do you think we rise in this kingdom in the midst of wickedness? How do you think we rise? How are you going to call partners to your ministry, dear man of God? It won't be by giving invitations right from where you are. Your kingdom come, your will be done. And right now I pray those who have been called into the ministry of prophetic intercession, I stretch my hands over you. May that grace come upon you right now. May that grace come upon you. 
Deborah's arise, Elijah's arise, men and women of power. Some of you from this conference, you will start prayer groups, prayer chains, prayer chains across territories in the name of Jesus Christ. Listen to me. You are in ministry here, please sit down. You are in ministry, let me give you an advice. There are two departments you should supervise yourself. Number one is your worship team. Your worship team. You must put an eye on them by yourself. Because when the ministry of psalmistry dies in your ministry, you are in trouble. Number two, the prayer department. Every man of God must be a member of his prayer department. Whether you have the time to physically be there or not, you must connect in the spirit. Pray for me, pray for me will make you a weak man. You want to preserve? Listen, let me tell you this. Apostle Felix, Jesus is teaching and here's what he said. He said, when a spirit leaves a man, listen carefully, that that spirit goes through dry regions. Is it in your Bible? And he said, seeking for a place of refuge, you will find none. And he will say, I will go back. He's still calling that man my house. I will go back to my house. And he finds the house swept, clean, but empty. Now look up. Let me share with you a mystery. The demon did not just leave the man by default. It was casted out by an agency of God's power. Is that true? But it goes to the wilderness where there is no prayer warrior and no one to cast it. And yet it is uncomfortable there. What makes it uncomfortable? I found out that the desert is very hot. The heat there in the desert can make that demon uncomfortable. And without any man casting it, it will leave the desert and choose to come back to you. That means if your body can become like that desert, if that fire that burns within you, Shanakapakatos, if that fire that is in that temple can burn like the desert, every spirit, every curse, every charm, every yoke, every spell will let you go. Please sit down. Jesus said, My house shall be called the house of of prayer that house is not just a building you are that temple that house if you are not the house of prayer you will become a den of robbers so satan will come to that house which is you since you are not a house of prayer he will steal your joy he will steal your faith he will steal everything he can steal Number two, what is the second key that will preserve the move of God in South Africa, in Africa, and across the globe? Are you ready? The second key, the regular convergence of believers within that territory to be trained, equipped, and empowered. The regular convergence. You want to preserve the move of God? There must be a regular convergence of believers within a territory for the purpose of training, the purpose of equipping, the purpose of being empowered. This is why coming to church is very important. There must be a regular convergence. Listen to me. When Satan wants his, the purposes of God to be thwarted, Something happens with the convergence of believers. The regular convergence of believers. There must never be an end to conferences, services, weekly meetings, apostolic and prophetic platforms that bring believers together because it is God's authorized platform to train, to equip, and to empower. Please hear what I'm telling you. That means when believers begin to have the laxity to go to the house of God, it's not an attack on those believers. It's an attack on the territory. 
You are only receiving what you are receiving because you are converged right now in a Sunday service. Can I tell you this? I beckon on you by the mercies of God. Train your children to love the house of God. Train your children to love the house of God. Train your children to serve in the house of God. Train your children to be genuinely connected to the house of God. I'd rather be a doorkeeper in the house of God, David said. There must be a regular convergence of believers. When the gathering of the saints is affected indefinitely across any territory, do you know, respectfully speaking, I know that world over there was a lockdown last year especially. Do you know how many believers' spiritual lives went down? Come on now. Just within a span of three months. Now, of course, I know that the, the government and the nations did their best to manage. But I'm saying that such a situation where at a global scale, almost every nation was on lockdown for three months. People returned back to their vomits. People who pastors were laboring to manage to stand strong, had a license to go back. People's prayer lives went down. People left God. The devil used the opportunity to attack those he had been trying to attack who were under prophetic coverings for a long time. By the time the lockdown was over, there were too many casualties already. The house of God is a place of inspiration. The house of God is a place where you will learn the word. The house of God is where you encounter the God of heaven. The house of God is God's authorized institution to mentor and build believers to become like God. Psalm 133 says, Behold how good and pleasant it is when brethren dwell together in unity. It says it's like the oil that comes upon the head of Aaron down to his bird, down to his skirt. It says, For there the Lord had commanded the blessing." There must be a regular convergence. That means you must pray that anywhere in South Africa where there are no churches and meeting places that call upon the name of the Lord, you must pray that God will send laborers there. Amen. The unreached must be reached. Yes, there is always an apostle among the unreached. There is always a prophet among the unreached. There is always a kingdom financier among the unreached. You must give them a chance to know God. Number three. What is the third key? Are you ready? Yes, you want to preserve the move of God in South Africa? There must be an open display of the power of God within your land. An open display of the miracle working power of God. Miracle signs and wonders. Do not tell people to come to a God whose power they cannot see. That's right, that's right. By the time the newspapers in South Africa are full of the wonder working power of God, that the headline on the newspaper is that a popular madman who is known everywhere in South Africa has now become a pastor. That is too notable to ignore. That's right. By the time five dead people medically confirmed come back to life. By the time someone who is obviously oppressed or whose family is down, maybe in parliament, one of the kings within the territory receives the power of God. Their endorsements will preserve the purposes of God. Can I tell you this? If people do not see the power of God, they will soon forget about God. That's right. The power of God reminds people that he's alive. Please hear what I'm telling you. This is very important. I'm just listing them. I apologize. We may not talk so much about scriptures. Miracles create convictions in the hearts of those who witness it and those who benefit from it. It lets people know that he's still seated on the throne. We live in a world right now where there are many alternatives. 
there are about 4,000 registered religions. Are you aware of that? And counting. So when you say God, people say, what are you talking about? God means anyone and anything I respect. Ah, but he says, this is eternal life. John chapter 17 and verse 3. That they may know you, the one true God and Jesus your son. John 4 and verse 48. Except they see signs and wonders, he says, they will not believe. John 4, 48 except they see they want to see the power of God to save they want to see the power of God to heal to deliver they want to see the power of God to bless the power of God to transform remember what happened to the jailer remember that story is that true Paul and Silas the Bible says at midnight they began to pray and to sing and everybody in the prison had them suddenly his majesty just came not an angel he came himself there was such an earthquake the chains broke and the bible says all doors open how many doors when he comes there is not one door that remains all apakatos katebakata mm. They prayed and they sang in prison, bound with chains. And when his majesty stepped in with an earthquake, all doors opened. And the jailer thought that they had run. And he took a sword wanting to kill himself. And Peter said, find your peace. And Paul, find peace. We are here. We are safe. There's no need to rush. God who did it can do it again. We are going to go out honorably. And the man said, no, I've not seen it this way. What do I need to do? And he says, now you are talking. Can I tell you this? South Africa, your territory needs to see a consistent display. Not once a year. A consistent display. Not just a display of power in church alone. They need to see the power of God. By the time... A man of God declares that there will be a bumper harvest. And strangely, the agricultural sector in South Africa receives a boost that is inexplainable by the agriculturists, the economies. This, we've not seen it in this fashion. Then they know there is a God in heaven. An open display of the supernatural power of God. Don't tell people to stop going to herbalists and native doctors if you cannot give them a superior alternative. Can I be honest with you? People will continue to run to the devil until the day we present an alternative that is consistent, superior, and result producing. The desperation of human needs will not allow them to forbear with nonsense. Once they go through pain beyond the threshold, they will source for alternatives and unashamedly bow to those alternatives. To see you high and lifted up, you are shining in the light of your glory. Pour out your power and love as we sing holy, holy, holy. We'll see you high and lifted up over South Africa, shining in the light of your glory. Pour out your power and love as we sing holy ho. One more time, South Africa. We'll see him high and lifted up. He is shining in the light of his glory. Pour out your power and love as we sing holy, holy, holy. This is why men and women of God must trust God for superior levels of end time anointings. 
the mantles that men like Smith Wigglesworth prophesied upon before they died. They said even what we have done, there is coming a generation that will do more. The general said it before they died. But I know that after this conference, because this conference is a trigger, suddenly you will begin to hear of men and women across South Africa, men of character and men of fire. You will begin to hear about the manifestations of the power of God in church services that will dumbfound principalities and powers. You will hear that fire wanted to consume a house but nothing was burnt. When they say we don't believe this, refer them to the burning bush. That it is possible for a bush to be burned yet not consumed. That a day will come when wild worship is going on in church. Someone who has been missing for 10 years, 15 years. The power of God will leave that altar and the fire like a tornado will go and fish that person back. Days will come when a church is empty, no conference, and you will see sinners running to the gate, and they will hold on to the gate and say, create a fresh service for us. We are coming to Jesus. Times will come where business people will finish their meeting, and while they are in their meeting about to round up, the power of the Holy Ghost will fall upon that meeting and you're watching senior executives under the anointing praying in the spirit I don't know the name of what is happening to me but I know that it's a new season you will see people in marketplaces receiving an outpouring students sitting in an exam hall and when they are done writing their exams fire falls upon them someone shall send the fire Someone shout, send the fire. Shout, send the fire. Please sit down. We're almost there. Preserving the move of God. Can I tell you this? Have you noticed that from scripture... Every time there was a display of the power of God, it was captured and preserved in a name. And they will be told, when your children ask you, what does this mean? Tell them, once upon a time, how do you think they got Shama and Rafa and Sikenu? They were all dimensions of his power that were captured in his name. Can I tell you this? The assignment of every generation is that you should not leave to your grave until you give the coming generation a new name that your experience has captured about God. South Africa, the generations coming, all of you who are from 50 and above, what name have you captured in your lifetime that will be given the children? Capture the names in songs that don't die. Capture the names in books that don't die. Capture the name in sermons that don't die. The God of Abraham is also God, but he does not walk the same as the God of Isaac. There is a dimension of the God of Abraham that is not seen in the God of Isaac. And when Jacob came, he said, I need to give God a name too. He wrestled with him and said, I will not let you go. Leave me for the day break it. He said, I will not let you go unless you bless me. He said, what is your name? Jacob. Thou shall no longer be called Jacob. For as a prince, you have had power with God and you have prevailed. He touched the whole of his thigh and he blessed him. The Bible says the sun arose and he called the name of the place Peniel. I have seen God face to face and my life is preserved. By the time we get to Psalm 24, he says, This is the generation of them that seek thee, O God of Jacob. 
that a day will come you will see the faithfulness of God and one day you will teach your children and say every time you are in trouble and it looks like the battles are raging there was a song I sang in 1981 before you came that is a song of victory that is like a code in this family you are good and your mercy is forever hallelujah do you know that was a song that was a code of victory every time the nation of Israel were surrounded by their enemies and defeat was imminent they raised that song you are good and your mercy endures and God is saying who is calling my dimension as a warrior clear the way for me please let's hurry up <laughs> number four are you ready the fourth way you preserve the move of God across a territory across South Africa are you ready intentional mentorship of younger believers and ministers intentional and methodical mentorship of younger believers now you see what your pastor did with pastor Colin here intentional mentorship of younger believers younger believers there don't just mean younger pastors younger businessmen younger politicians fathers across different fields fathers across different industries fathers in ministry don't just collect seed from your sons mentor them That's right. don't just do impartation for them teach them the road to the anointing teach them the road to power second timothy chapter 2 and verse 2 very quickly second timothy chapter 2 and verse 2 we're wrapping up second timothy 2 and verse 2 and the things which thou hast heard of me among many witnesses read with me the same commit thou to faithful men who shall be able to teach others also can i tell you this when smith wigglesworth listen carefully when smith wigglesworth was preparing to join the cloud of witnesses he told Lester Sumro he said when you are old do not die with this mantle find young men yes, train them impart upon them today we are privileged recipients of that baton because the fathers allowed to train us many of you have heard of my encounter with Dr. Miles Munro a greatly revered mentor in life and in death. I honor him even in the grave. Do you know when God began to show me that I was called into ministry, I wrote many men of God. Then there were no phones. And Dr. Miles Munro was the only man of God who replied me back and written. He said, I believe in you. I believe in this and that and I read his books and God guided me I remember I was at the southern part of Nigeria preaching in a conference that morning literally I began to feel a sharp pain across my chest I said what is going on and by 5 a.m. Nigerian time I was told that my greatly revered mentor had gone But I said, no, even though he's dead, he still speaks. We are the continuation of his impact. Fathers, immortalize your impact by raising sons. Don't just raise people who call you father. Raise people who replicate your values. Can I tell you this? Please, fathers in business, in ministry, don't allow these young people to stand up and just do what they want to do. Right. You are a father, discipline them in love. Teach them. Right. Love their future more than your reputation. They may not understand. Chastise them in righteousness. Not out of a wicked heart. Let them learn the law of process. 
minimize premature manifestation let them stay until something called due season the casualties we have in the body of Christ today is because of some of these premature manifestations you're a young man here in ministry listen to me just because you can heal the sick you can prophesy does not mean you are ready for ministry can I tell you what you call pulpit ministry is only 30% of what ministry really is there is a skill to standing here. It's a very slippery path. If you, do, if you are not trained to stand, you can fall. South Africa, respect your fathers. Not because they are perfect, but because they are sincere. When the devil wants to destroy a territory, he kills the fathers. And woe betides a nation that does not have political fathers. You do not have political fathers, the younger ones will become a worse expression of the fathers. You don't have fathers in ministry. South Africa, you know that the church in this nation is going through sharp transitions. Can I tell you, pray that God will raise fathers indeed. Businessmen, don't just die with billions and have children argue and have people argue over your money. Transfer your values to younger people. Professors, don't be the only professor you know. Raise people. Raise people. Raise people. Can I challenge you? If you are a professional in any area here, you have failed if within 10 years of your moment of exploit, you cannot show at least two people who are becoming like you. <laughs> 10 years from the time of your exploits, if you cannot produce at least two people, even if they have not arrived, let's see how far they have come. Can I be honest with you? If you are the only one who is the champion doing what you are doing, the day the devil strikes you, there will be nobody to support you. This is why nations lose their treasures with the death of just one person. You can cheat death when you transfer yourself to many people. I pray you are learning something here. Number five. How do we preserve the, the purposes of God and the move of God in South Africa. Are you ready for the fifth point? Embrace influence. Embrace influence. Don't run away from influence. There are two ways principally that the kingdom of God advances. Number one is called evangelism. Number two is called influence. Evangelism establishes the purposes of God in the hearts of men. Influence establishes the purposes of God across a territory. If you have evangelism without influence, you will have people who are saved, but they will remain beggarly as far as the territory is concerned. You need influence. Let me define influence. Here is my definition of influence. Influence is the ability to compel men to buy into your ideologies without using force or cruelty. The ability, the fortitude to compel men to buy into your ideologies, your value systems without using force or cruelty. If I can make you love God the way I love him, if I can make you pray the way I pray, if I can make you love a decent life the way I love, without using force or cruelty, I have influenced you. Can I be honest with you? Be careful who influences you. You will always become like the influence. That's right, that's right. This is the reason why we must pray that God himself will raise kingdom-minded, born-again, tongue-talking people in politics, in business, in government. It is my prayer. I'm not the kind of man of God. I made a covenant with God that I will never raise a people who are only spiritually on fire. In order of priority, their spiritual lives are my primary focus. However, they must be people of influence. I believe in influence. Yes, sir. 
if you do not have the people of God represented in your parliament, your businesses, one day there will rise a pharaoh who did not know Joseph. And your work of 30 years will end under the ungodliness of one man. I believe in influence. There must be someone in the security sector who can be a representation of the purposes of God there. There must be someone in your justice system who loves Jesus sincerely. I'm not talking of religiosity and I'm not just talking of favoring Christians. I'm talking of bringing forth the value system of the kingdom such that everyone benefits, both Christians and non-Christians. The value system of the kingdom does not benefit Christians alone. It benefits all of God's creation. This is what I'm teaching. Your universities and your higher institutions of learning must have professionals who also bow to the Lordship of Christ. So that in addition to secular enlightenment, they bring people to a life of decorum and power and spirituality. Are we learning? South Africa and South African churches standing on this platform, I beseech you men of God by the message of God, teach your people the principles of influence. Greatness is important. Listen to me. The body of Jesus is hanging on the cross there. And Jesus Christ died on the cross, but he was not supposed to remain on the cross. Yet, nobody had the influence to bring that body down. No prayer warrior could bring that body down. It took a man of influence called Joseph of Arimathea. He used his influence with government to say, bring that body down. I have a virgin tomb. If he did not donate his tomb through influence, you will not be able to say, oh death, where is your sting? And oh grave, where is your victory? Influence played a role in our salvation. Believe in prosperity. Believe in increase. Believe in greatness. For as long as the church is surrounded by men and women of influence who have kingdom at heart, there is only so much the devil can do. Influence. Don't just teach people to fast alone as much as I've said it. Don't just teach people to pray alone. Teach people to translate the values of the God life into a context of honor and dignity that the world can see that you have utilized kingdom tools, the weapons of victory to produce a destiny that is enviable. When God granted me the anointing and the grace to raise and to mentor and to build kings and nobles i said thank you for this grace why because for every king to function in a land there must be a priestly and a prophetic cover That's right. the formation of king priest and prophet is an old ordinance that will not change woe betides a professional or a king who stands alone in politics and government and does not have the prophetic and the priesthood to protect Come them on. Number six, are you ready? How do you preserve the move of God in South Africa? The sixth and the final key, there must be an open display of love. An open display of love without prejudices, without religious biases, without cultural biases. There has to be an open display of of love can I be honest with you until there is love there is a dimension of evangelism called evangelism through love where it is the love that is the preacher and my goodness love preaches well it is love does not need an interpreter you preach love everybody will hear and understand church of the Lord Jesus Christ if you cannot show your people love, if a preacher cannot show people love, if a government can't show people love, if your systems and your structures cannot show people love, then I assure you, sooner or later, the reality of the faith life will fade away. The advantage we have in the faith life is that Christianity 
is the advocate of love. Here are my disciples. Not when you heal the sick. Not when you raise the dead. Not when you pray in tongues. Not when you prophesy. He says, though I speak with tongues of men and of angels and I have not love, I am nothing. Even if I offer my body to be burnt and I have not love, I am nothing. Though I know all mysteries, I have all prophecies and I have not love, I am nothing. He says, love is patient. Love is kind. Love is humble. It endures all things. It hopes all things. Love. There remain at these three. Faith, hope, and love. But the greatest is love. In 1 Corinthians chapter 12, as I round up, after teaching us on the gifts of the Spirit, prophecy, miracles, he said, behold, I show you a more excellent way. There is a more excellent way of preaching. Preaching by love. There is a more excellent way of prophesying prophesying in love there is a more excellent way of governance governance in love there is a more excellent way of learning learning in love love never fails please repeat this after me love never fails one more time love that means if you find anything failing add love to it and it stops failing immediately if a nation is failing Add love to it. The Bible says love never fails. You find a preacher that is failing, add love. Love never fails. Business people, that's a strategy. You want to know what is fail proof. And the Bible already tells you that love never fails. So when you invest in love, ah, Next time you are listing your investments, don't just list telecom, real estate. Add love. And it will only take an unwise person to laugh at you. What are your investments? I have investment in real estate. I have an investment in oil and gas. I have investment in this. I have investment in love. Me, really? Yes, sir. Because no eye has seen, no ear has heard, neither has it come into the heart of any man that which God has in store not for prayer warriors not for fasting giants not for effective preachers them that love him he says how can you say you love God that you have not seen when you dislike your neighbor who you have seen South Africa this is my final word for you in this season Africa Divided we fall, but united we stand. All hands together. Please stand up. If you can hold hands with someone, please do. Lord, make us instruments of your peace. Where there is hatred, let your love increase. Lord, make us instruments of your peace. Walls of pride and prejudice shall cease. When we are your instrument of peace and with our hands lifted up we will worship our king and with our hands lifted up we come before you rejoicing with our hands lifted up to the sky and the world wonders why We'll just tell them we love in our King. Oh, we just tell them we love in our King. I did this at the beginning of the conference. Please lend me one minute. Even if it's just the first part of your anthem. Colin, can you do that for me in one minute? I'd like to end my session honoring your nation, South Africa by singing once again 
the anthem of your nation please kosi sigeleli africa malu paganyisu pondo lwayo izwa imitanda zo yetu go you in the name of Jesus Christ I decree and declare that every blessing that was allotted for this conference I stand in faith with the angel over this house Apostle Felix Oko on behalf of the church in South Africa I declare be blessed Amen. be blessed Amen. I bless members of parliament Yes, sir. Those in governance. I bless the business people in South Africa. Amen. I bless the young people, the students. Amen. I bless the professionals in South Africa. Amen. I bless every man and every woman of God in South Africa. Amen. I bless every citizen of this land. Amen. I decree and declare over your life. Go from glory to glory to glory to glory to glory. Amen. In the name of Jesus. Amen. South Africa and Africa. I pray that next year by this time. Come on. You would be a thousand times greater. Amen. In the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Apostle Felix, thank you so much. Thank your wonderful wife. House of Treasures, South Africa, Africa. I love you and God bless you. Thank you. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Is that
that how you celebrate the man of God that God sent you? Glory! Dearly beloved, I hope you were blessed by this message. Do not keep the video to yourself. Share to as many as you can to help them bless. Check our homepage for more of our messages. Subscribe to the channel. Comment on it. Like it. See you on our next video. Bye. Pray. Pray. Pray for your destiny. Salaska de Bashka na kata branda kete kotos, kete branda kata pa kotos koto pre kete kene kata. The phase of development, Lord, grant me the discipline.